<laughs> Almost. <laughs> Today I have got five boxes of shoes, some spikes that I'm going to be trying out uh, down here on the lovely Canvey Island track. We've got spikes from Asics, Adidas, Nike, New Balance and Hocker. And I'm just about managing to, to carry them all. Um, we're going to do a bit of a workout today, testing them all out. I'm going to do a kilometre in each shoe at around 5k, 10k pace, followed by a 400 metre rep uh, a little bit faster around 1500 meter pace to test these shoes out should be a good one today's video is sponsored by pro direct running who have provided all of these running shoes uh, for today's video and if you'd like to shop any of the spikes that you see today then you can do so via their website and if you look at the link in the description and use ben is running su23 summer 23 uh, you can get five percent off your orders so yeah thank you to pro direct for sponsoring today's video let's get into it there we go. All right, see you in a bit. So that's the warm-up done. First shoe today we're going to be trying out is the Nike Dragonfly. Um, I've actually used this shoe before, um, but this one's in a nice pink and yellow colorway. Um, so this shoe, interestingly, doesn't have a carbon fiber plate. It's got a P-Bax plate, um, which sort of becomes the spike plate here at the front. I need to put the spikes in it before I get going in this one. Athletes like Jakob Ingebrigtsen running this shoe. And yeah, you've got a nice sort of mesh upper. So it's super breathable if you're doing events like steeplechase where you need the shoe to drain. Um, and it's got a little bit of a hole there at the back. Uh, and this one is called the Nike Dragonfly. So I'm just gonna put the spikes in now, lace it up, and then take it for a kilometer at around 5K pace and then a 400 meter rep at around 1500 meter pace. So these spikes I'm putting in now, I think are three mil spikes, which is pretty standard for track racing shoes. Um, I've actually used the Nike Dragonfly for cross country races, and I basically just swapped out these little spikes and put some, some bigger ones in. Uh, you can get spikes that go up to 15 millimeters, so super long. We've got two, four, six spikes in this one uh, on that Pebax p plate as I was talking about and we've also got a full length uh, Zoom X midsole which is uh, Nike's most uh, reactive foam that you find in the Vaporfly, the Alpha Fly, all their racing shoes um, on the market so yeah this should be a nice poppy um, snappy ride especially being super super lightweight. I've also brought some scales down with me um, so we can weigh them uh, this morning and find out which shoe comes out the lightest uh, and the only other sort of stat to mention about the Nike uh, Dragonfly is it comes in at 160 pounds. So in my UK size seven and a half, it weighs 130 grams. Pretty good. Let's get it laced up and get into that first, first rep of the workout. Let's give these ones a go then. So I'm just about to start the first rep of the workout. It's going to be a kilometre at around 5k effort. Uh, I'm not going to look at my watch when I'm running around just so I can sort of try and feel out a 5k pace. And at the end, I just thought it'd be interesting to see uh, if there's any big differences between the, two, the five spikes that we're going to be trying today. Um, so I'm just about to hit start on my watch. First shoes I've got on my feet are the Nike Dragonflies in this hot pink. Um, but yeah, here we go. Hopefully get around three minutes, 3.05 minutes for these K reps and then go a little bit faster for the 400 reps. Okay, here we go. Three, two, one, let's go. So bloody windy. Whew. There we go. 3.02, roughly around 5K effort. Uh, I tried not to look at my watch and now I'm going to give myself two minutes recovery and then do a 400 meters at around 1500 meter pace, so a little bit quicker. Whew, feeling good. Three, two, one. Sixty-six point two four. Whew. Okay, that's one shoe done, four to go. Alright, hat coming off I think, get serious. So the next shoe I'm going to be testing is the Hocker Spike. This one's called the Cielo X2 LD. Let's have a little look at this one. Um, I've not tried this one out at all yet, so I'm quite excited to give it a go. 
Um, this has only just come out from Hocker, and I saw a few of the Hocker athletes using it at the night of the 10,000 PBs, which was the previous vlog that came out on the channel. Um, this one's got a carbon fiber plate that you can see here running down the middle, as well as a P-back uh, sort of plastic spike plate. So I've got four spikes to put in here. Uh, and also we've got a bit more of a responsive foam in comparison to the previous versions of this shoe. Uh, and interestingly, quite a lot of stack height here at the back in comparison to something like the Dragonfly. So yeah, I'm excited to see how this one goes. I reckon it's gonna be suited a bit more to the, the 5K and 10K race distances. And that extra bit of cushioning should be pretty good. Okay, let's put this shoe on the scales. Again, UK seven and a half. It weighs 132 grams. It's a pretty lightweight offering again from Hocker sun's come out as well let's get this one laced up and get into the first one kilometer rep it's been seven eight minutes since i last did a, did any running <laughs> it's not the ideal setting for for a workout um, but this the point of this workout is to improve my sort of 5k speed um, so that 1k rep is at 5k pace and then that 400 meter rep is just to sort of encourage me to get used to running a little bit faster um, I've come from doing a lot of marathon training over the last few months so the faster stuff feels really alien to me at the moment but yeah important to get it in over the next few weeks as I prepare for my next track race which will be in a few weeks time uh, I'm doing another 3000 meter race uh, up in Manchester for the NAL there we go cool that feels really nice a little bit snug um, I might try putting this one on without a sock actually yeah that feels a little bit better so maybe you want to go half a size up with the hocker spike um, just from my first impressions it did feel a little bit snug there with a the sock but without a sock I think that's going to be a lot better fit they feel pretty good it's nice to have a little bit of extra cushion in there at the back okay here goes the first rep in the hocker spikes one kilometer again at 5k pace I'm not going to look at my watch until the end just like I did with the dragonflies and we'll see where we end up okay here we go three two one let's go Woo. there we go 303 for the hocker definitely feels like there's a lot more cushioning in the back of the shoe overall though I'd say comfort wise maybe not quite so comfortable as the Nikes um, and I think I made the right decision there to go sockless because yeah it feels a little bit snug in the toes area but really good shoe nonetheless uh, just give it a go over 400 meters <clears throat> 30 seconds of recovery left three two one here we go 400 meters 1500 meter pace There we go, 67 for that one. So again, about a second slower than the Nikes. Obviously not the most scientific experiment, but yeah, these definitely feel like more of a 10K racing shoe for me. That little bit extra cushioning. Let's get changed into the next ones. The next shoe we are gonna be testing is the Adidas Spike. This one's called the Avanti TYO. Again, compared to the Dragonfly, a little bit more cushioning. Um, and it's probably my favorite of the spikes we're going to be testing today at this point in the video um, I've not tried all of them yet so uh, maybe our, my opinion will change but this one has Light Strike Pro which again is Adidas's most responsive uh, midsole and interestingly this one doesn't have a carbon fiber plate instead it has these carbon infused rods uh, the same with the uh, Adidas carbon racing shoes so yeah it'll be interesting to see how that feels on the track this one feels a little bit more uh, got a bit more give in it in comparison to something like the Dragonfly and again this one comes in at 140 pounds just like the Hocker so a little bit cheaper than the Nike Dragonfly. Let's get some spikes in it, put it on the scales and then yeah get going on that 1k wrap again. Okay here we go, 1k rep in the Adidas Avanti TYO in 3, 2, 1, let's go. Three oh three on the clock, not bad. Same as the hocker, they're all around 
302, 303 so far for those K reps. So yeah, nice and consistent so far. Let's get round and do a 400 rep. So I've still got about 20 seconds left until I start the 400. But yeah, these shoes definitely feel a lot more natural than some of the other spikes I've tried out. There's just a lot more balance in that cushioning uh, between the forefoot and the heel of the shoe. I've got six seconds left before I start the 400 rep at 1500 meter pace. So yeah, aim for around 66, 67 seconds again. Here we go, three, two, one, let's go. Sixty-six. Nice. That's three spikes down. Two to go. Nearly there. So the next shoe I'm going to be trying is from New Balance. This one is called uh, the New Balance MDX. Uh, this again, their middle distance spike. Um, interestingly, I've gone half a size up with this one. So this is a UK 8 and I did try this one on at home and it did feel a little bit tight. So you're definitely going to want to go half a size up. It's also the most expensive one that we've tried so far, uh, coming in at £200. There is one shoe that we have left that is a little bit more expensive. This one has a full length carbon plate running from the back to the front and the spikes are already inbuilt into the carbon plate. So you don't need to screw them in. Um, that does mean though that once these wear down, uh, you're not going to be able to replace them. So that's something you want to uh, take into consideration. So before we get going, just put this one on the scales. How much does it weigh in a UK 8? 114 grams so by far the late the lightest we've tried today 113 114 um, so yeah this one should feel super super lightweight underfoot oh this one is really difficult to get on come on two hours later Ugh, there we go success wow yeah this one you're definitely going to want to go a full size a full size up, otherwise you're going to struggle to get it on like I did there. Interesting from New Balance, they've gone for a sock-like fit on the upper, which yeah, looks really good and feels comfortable now I've got it on, but getting the shoe on my foot was pretty difficult there. Oh, I've still got to put the other one on. Whew. It's a workout in itself, yeah. There we go. That's the secret. Bloody hell, that was hard work. Right, let's get going. 1K rep in the New Balance Fuel Cell MDX. Three, two, one. Let's go. And 302. Like clockwork. Woo! These do feel super, super lightweight. Got to give New Balance that, but the fit is just so snug, especially considering these are a whole half a size bigger than all the other spikes. You're definitely gonna to wanna to go full size up, but yeah, probably the quickest feeling spikes of the lot so far. Just feel really aggressive, get you up onto your toes. I'd say they're probably, for me, gonna be more useful for sort of like the 1500 meters, 3K, but that's just a first impression. Gotta get around to the start again and get going on this 400 meter rep. Let's go. Three, two, one, let's go. Come on. Oh, they feel nice, really nice. Wish we didn't have this bloody wind to contend with, but never mind. Sixty-seven. Woo. Oh, they feel really nice though at that speed. Really good, impressive stuff. Oh, right, one more shoot to go, and then we're done. Save the best till last, arguably though. Most expensive shoe, 225 pounds, the A6 Metaspeed LD. Yeah, easy. So the last spike of the video, today we're gonna to be testing out the A6 Metaspeed LD. This is actually my current uh, race spike, if you like, of choice. But I've not tried it in this beautiful red colorway. Um, so this one has the FF Blast um, midsole from A6, which is their most uh, FF Turbo, sorry, their most responsive um, foam and it also has a little bit of a more uh, harder foam called FF Nano which just offers a little bit of stability here in the back. Interestingly on the bottom of this one there's no spikes at all. The carbon fibre plate on this one is sort of like serrated so this just helps grip the track um, instead of the spikes so yeah it appears that it doesn't have spikes but it does have these little like little little knobbly bits which offers some good traction. I already know this shoe is pretty good, um, so I'm looking forward to 
So using this one last, see how it compares to the others, um, having done nearly oh, six, seven kilometers of running in the other spikes now in total, it'll be interesting to see how this one feels uh, on tired of the legs. Three, two, one, let's go. Oh yeah, this is the one. It doesn't even feel like a spike. Woo. 3.02 for that one. Yeah, these feel really nice. I was just saying, almost like they feel like a training shoe with a little bit of extra grip, less of a spike. So for somebody who's come from the marathon, yeah, these are really good in comparison to something that feels a little bit too aggressive. Really nice. Woo, one 400 meter rep to go. And then we can get out of here. Sixty-seven. That'll do. These shoes are definitely not designed for sort of the faster pace. I'd say at fifteen hundred meter pace, they didn't feel too great. But at that five k pace, they felt really good. Definitely my favourite in terms of comfort. Woo! Job done. Workout in the bank. Just the cool down, and I'll go over all the splits and talk you through each shoe in a little bit more detail when we get home. La 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 la. So I just got back from the track. Let me try and summarize how the workout went. So all of the K reps I did were within a second of each other, either 302 or 303 per kilometer. And the 400 meter reps all were around 66 seconds or 67 seconds. So what I've done, is I've added those two times up and I've ranked the shoes from fifth all the way up to first in terms of which were fastest for me on that workout. And I'm not saying these are the fastest shoes and you should definitely go out and buy the shoe that goes in number one. This is just what I found from today's workout. So in at number five was the Hocker. It was the slowest spike today. The only difference between the fastest and the slowest in terms of adding both the kilometer and 400 meter times was less than a second and a half. So none of these shoes are slow or inferior to each other, but somebody had to come last. It's still a really good shoe and I did enjoy the amount of cushioning. If you're somebody who's looking to do maybe a five or 10K, then this is gonna be a great option at 140 pounds. But in my experiment, um, I did find it to be the slowest of the spikes today. Interestingly, in at number four is the New Balance MDX. I was expecting this shoe to perform a little bit higher. Um, of all the spikes I used today, I was probably most impressed by this New Balance shoe. Um, it just felt super lightweight underfoot, really snappy, it gets you right up onto your toes. And I thought of all the shoes, it probably had the highest energy return, or at least that's what I was feeling, but it only came in at number four. So that just goes to show you um, that this experiment was only very sort of rough. Um, and they're not concrete evidence that one spike is faster than the other. I will say the fit of this one probably lets it down. In at 200 pounds, I really struggled to get it on. Um, just the rear of this shoe is very rigid. It doesn't give. Um, so if you are looking at picking this shoe up, you wanna go at least a size up, I would say, half size or a size up. Now onto the podium in number three was probably my favorite spike uh, going into the challenge, the ASICS Metaspeed LD. A really balanced spike, this one. Well, not really a spike, a spikeless spike as ASICS branded it. It's got a really nice amount of cushioning and it almost feels like a road shoe, um, but with a little bit extra grip. It doesn't feel too aggressive. It doesn't feel like it's gonna absolutely batter my calves the next day. Um, and if I was gonna be training, uh, I probably would use this shoe. The only issue with this one it is the most expensive at 225 pounds. So for me, it's probably the most desirable, but I know for a lot of people out there uh, who haven't got gifted five pairs of shoes to try out, that 225 pound price point is gonna put a few people off, especially when other shoes at around the 140 pounds uh, compete and have actually performed better in this challenge. So in at number two was the Adidas Avanti TYO. Now this is a great spike at 140 pounds. I think it's definitely the best value for money of all the spikes. You've got a really nice balanced cushioning from the forefoot all the way to the heel. Um, it doesn't feel that aggressive this one, I will say. So maybe if you're somebody who's looking to do the 1500 meters, you probably wanna go for something more like the New Balance or the Dragonfly. But this shoe for the 5K and 10K is gonna be great. Sizing wise, I would say 
say this is probably the roomiest of the spikes, so you may want to go half a size down. Um, I went true to size and there was a little bit of lip wiggle room there. But yeah, this shoe is definitely the best value for money of the lot. And in at number one, the fastest shoe. Now this was the shoe I used first. So I was nice and fresh at this point in the workout. I can see why the Nike Dragonfly is the market leader of spikes. Comes in at 160 pounds, which relative to all the other spikes is competitive. It's not the cheapest, it's not the most expensive, um, but it's nice and balanced. You've got um, a great little spike plate here, so you get a nice amount of grip. Uh, it gets you up into your toes, it feels aggressive, it feels fast. I would be confident racing a 1500 meters in this spike all the way up to a 10K. And if you get down to your local races, I'm sure you're gonna see a lot more of this shoe than any of the others. And I can see why from this experiment. So if you wanna see all the splits, I'll put them up on the screen here so you can have a little look through yourself. But as I was saying, only 1.5 seconds between the two. The fastest being the Dragonfly and the slowest being the Hocker. Um, my sort of standout shoe, of these spikes, if I could only have one, I would pick the A6 Metaspeed LD. That's just me personally, coming from a more marathon distance background. Most affordable, definitely goes to the Adidas Avanti. 140 pounds, it's gonna suit a wide range of runners. Um, even if you land on your heel uh, to your forefoot, it's gonna yeah cushion you no matter where you land on it, whereas you can't say that for all the spikes. I would give the most impressive and the one that, that sort of shone out to me above all the rest was this New Balance shoe. Um, if it wasn't for the fit, I probably would be using it a lot more. It feels super lightweight. To be honest with you, it feels like you're running barefoot, but you still have a nice amount of cushion in the forefoot. The only downside is those spikes, when they wear down on the bottom, you're not gonna be able to replace them. So that pretty much summarizes today's video. Five different spikes, one workout. If you'd like to pick up any of the spikes that you saw in today's video, then please consider shopping via the link in description at Pro Direct Running, the sponsors of today's video. And if you use Ben is Running SU, Summer, SU23, then you can get 5% off all of your orders over at ProDirect in this summer period. Thanks for watching. As always, aspire to run, run to inspire, and I'll see you with a few track races very shortly. Bye-bye.